Hello sweet friends! Today I'm going to show you how to make a super easy chunky crochet blanket. Enjoy mindlessly stitching away while watching your favorite show or listening to a good audiobook. The Mabel blanket is an absolute dream to work on for both beginner and seasoned crocheters. First things first, here's a list of materials that you'll need. And in case it's helpful, I have a printable version of this pattern available in my shop. It'll be linked below with more detailed information and different size instructions. First thing you're going to want to do is grab three colors of your favorite worsted weight yarn. Using all three strands at the same time, make a slip knot. Grab a pea size tuck. My favorite is this one from Boy Yarn Crafts. I'll try to get a link for you down below. Hold the yarn however is most comfortable to you. I like to hold the yarn weave between my fingers, under my pinky, over my ring finger, under my middle, and over my index finger like this just to help me keep a nice even tension. Using all three strands at the same time, make a starting chain however short or long you'd like. This blanket pattern is super customizable, but if you would like specific instructions for different sizes, please check out the printable version of this pattern I have in my shop. It'll be linked below. But for my blanket in this video, I chained 95 across and my blanket was about 48 inches wide when I was all finished. Once your chain is at your desired length, single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And usually when you're crocheting, you'd place your first single crochet stitch in this space right here. But with this blanket, I like to do a little trick where I actually single crochet through the back bumps of the chain. If you flip your chain over, you'll see these loops all along the back. And I like to single crochet in these back bumps of the chain instead. So here's the first bump. I'm going to work my hook into the second bump right here and make a single crochet stitch. and then single crochet into each chain all the way across. Going through the back bumps of the chain is totally worth the bit of extra effort just because it makes that first row look so nice. If you'd like more information about single crocheting through the back bumps of the chain, I will have a video linked for you below. But if any of this sounds weird or complicated or confusing, please feel free to completely skip this trick and just single crochet across however is easiest and most comfortable for you. The only thing that is important here is that you're single crocheting into each chain all the way across to the other edge of your blanket. Once you've made your last single crochet, make a chain one and turn your work. This is our chain one, and we are going to make a single crochet into this space right here, which is actually your last single crochet stitch of the previous row. So take your crochet hook and work it into this space, making sure to go underneath both loops here, front and back, and make a single crochet stitch. And in the stitch right next to it, place another single crochet. And then just continue to single crochet all the way across to the other end of your blanket. For each new row of this blanket, you will make a chain one and then just single crochet into each stitch all the way across. If you at all struggle with knowing which stitch exactly is the last stitch of each row or your blankets always seem to turn into trapezoids rather than rectangles, please be sure to check out my how to keep the edge of your blanket straight video. In it, I just share a super simple trick that I love to use to help take out all the guesswork of where each row actually ends. And if you need help knowing how to start a new skein of yarn while making your Mabel blanket, check out my video called how to make a magic knot. That's the trick I always love to use when making Mabel blankets. It just makes starting a new skein super easy and so that I don't have to weave in loose ends later, which is always so nice. Both videos will be linked in the description box below if you'd like to check them out, but that's about all there is to this blanket. The whole thing is just single crochet stitches back and forth, super easy and it's so relaxing to work on. Once your blanket is as long as you'd like, mine was about 60 inches long, go ahead and finish up that very last row and then we'll add a border. Once you've placed your very last single crochet stitch, go ahead and put two more in that exact same space for a total of three single crochet stitches. This is going to act as the corner of our blanket. So we've got one single crochet, there's two, And there's three. Three single crochet stitches all in the same space. Once you've got all three, go ahead and turn your work. And now we're going to single crochet along the side here. 
Try your best to do an even amount of single crochet stitches all the way across. What I like to do is go through this space right here, working underneath just the top two loops on this side. You can see that there's the two loops on the top with a few strands of yarn underneath the hook. And just to show that a little more clearly, the few strands of yarn underneath with the two loops on the top. And there's your first single crochet stitch on the side. Place the next stitch in this space right here. And then I'm back to the spot where I like to work underneath the top loops. But if you want and it's easier and you don't want to worry about going underneath the top loops, you can totally just place a single crochet in this space right here. But I personally feel like it's a little bit too big of a gap. I just prefer the look so much more of this one rather than this one. But you do whatever is most comfortable for you. I'm going to do that stitch really quick and work my hook just underneath those top loops, leaving a few strands of yarn underneath just to help close up that gap. You can see that doing all this adds the sweetest and easiest little border and just helps clean up the edge of your blanket. <laughs> Looks so nice. Keep repeating the process of working a single crochet into this space. And then in the next space, working your hook underneath the top two loops, leaving a few strands of yarn underneath to help close up the gap all the way across until you reach the other end of your blanket. Once you reach the other side of your blanket, work a single crochet into this space right here. And we are actually going to create our corner stitches into this space over here underneath these two loops, kind of on the side edge here. So slide your hook underneath both loops. There's your first single crochet. And we want to place three single crochet stitches all in the same space. There's the second single crochet and the third. Turn your work again and now let's single crochet across this edge of your blanket. We're going to work into this space right here underneath both of these loops and make a single crochet. And in the next space do the exact same thing going underneath both loops. Place single crochet stitches all the way across like this until you reach the other end of your blanket. Single crochet until you reach that very last stitch of the row. You're going to place three single crochet stitches in this same space right here. So there's our first single crochet. Now let's place the second one. There's one, two and there's three. Turn your work again and now let's add the border along this side edge over here. Just repeat the same process that you did on the other side of your blanket while you single crochet across so that all the stitches line up and everything looks even. Once you reach the other end of your blanket, you will see that you actually already have a single crochet stitch in this corner here. So you only need to place two more single crochet stitches in this space here to have a total of three. So here's one and two for a total of three single crochet stitches all in the same space. And guess what, sweet friends? We are all finished crocheting our blanket. So go ahead and grab a pair of scissors, cut your working yarn away from your blanket, making sure to leave yourself several inches of yarn to work with for this next step. Grab a hold of your hook and pull on the loop until it pulls all the way through. Get a darning needle and we are about to make an invisible join for a seamless finish. So this is the last stitch we crocheted on our blanket. We're gonna skip this space right here and instead slide our needle underneath both loops of this stitch right next to it. Gently tighten the yarn just enough so that it blends in with all the other loops along the top. And then we're going to go back to our original last stitch, but this time, instead of going underneath both loops, slide your needle down through the middle and only through the front loop here. And then same as before, gently tighten the yarn just enough so that it starts to blend in with all the other stitches. 
and just like magic, everything will start to look completely seamless and it makes me so happy every time. Now all that's left to do is to weave in the loose ends. So normally I would thread my needle through this space right here and go four stitches across, but I'm kind of a perfectionist and this gap here was bothering me a little bit. So instead I threaded my needle down through this border stitch so that I could get to the row right underneath the gap. And then I threaded my needle through the center of the gap back up to that top row there just to kind of help pull those two rows together. Close up the gap a little bit. And it already looks so much better. So we've threaded through two stitches across here and I like to go four just to be safe. So we're gonna thread through two more. And then I like to find a little loop or stitch close by that I can thread the needle through to act as an anchor point. This just helps hold the yarn in place while I pass back through the same four stitches as before. You can see I'm going through the exact same four stitches, just in the opposite direction. This helps hold the yarn in place super securely so they don't have to worry about loose ends poking out later. Once all your ends are weaved in, go ahead and grab your scissors and cut the extra yarn close to your blanket. And that's it, you're all done. You can enjoy your blanket as is, or if you'd like to add some fancy fringe, keep on watching, I'll teach you how to do that. To make fringe for your blanket, you're gonna wanna grab a skein of yarn and start to unravel from the outside of the skein rather than unraveling from the inside here. That way the strands are more likely to lay straight and not look as bent or twisted. Next, grab a book, take your yarn and line it up with the bottom of the book using your thumb to hold it in place while you begin to wrap your yarn around and around the book as many times as you'd like. Once it's nice and full, grab a pair of scissors and cut the working yarn away from the skein and then cut along the bottom of the wrapped yarn you just created for your fringe. And now you've got a nice pile of yarn to work with. In case you're wondering, my strands of yarn were about 18 inches long. For this particular style of fringe, I like to attach it along the top of this first single crochet row, right into these spaces right here. So first things first, grab a crochet hook, and for our first section of fringe, I like to attach it to the side over here. So look and find the side stitch that matches up with that row. Slide your hook in from back to front, right underneath both loops on the edge there. Grab five strands of yarn, fold them in half, Drape this loop from the folded strands over your crochet hook and use your hook to pull the strands of yarn through the blanket. And then I think it's easier to use my fingers for this step to reach up through the loop, grab a hold of the strands of yarn and use my fingers to pull them through the loop and then just pull to tighten. Now that we've attached our first section of fringe, we're gonna skip this space and attach our fringe into this space instead. So grab your crochet hook, go up underneath the blanket and through this space right here. Same as before, grab five strands of yarn and fold them in half. Take the loop from the folded strands and drape it over your crochet hook and use your hook to pull through the stitches of the blanket. Use your fingers to reach up through the loop, grab a hold of the strands of yarn, and pull the strands through the loop with your fingers. And then just pull to tighten. Grab five strands of yarn, fold them in half, insert your hook through the back of the blanket, making sure to skip a space in between. Pull the strands through the blanket with your hook, and then pull the strands through the loop with your fingers. Then pull to tighten. Here's how things should look once you started to add your fringe. Go ahead and repeat this process all the way across the bottom edge of your blanket until you reach the other side. If you ever end up with a weird loop of yarn that's kind of poking out and won't tighten down, you can grab each strand of yarn individually and give it a pull until that problem loop goes away. Once your fringe is all attached, we are going to add a beautiful knot detail between these two sections of fringe. Take five strands of yarn from one section of fringe, then grab five strands of yarn from the section of fringe right next to it, and we're gonna tie them together with an overhand knot. To do that, I like to hold my two fingers together like this, reach up under the strands to scoop the yarn, then I slide the tail of yarn between these two fingers and pinch them together and then I pull through the loop to make an overhand knot. Don't make this knot too tight in case you need to adjust the height later. Then we're gonna take the five leftover strands from this section of fringe and grab five new strands from the section right next to it. Same as before, use your fingers to scoop underneath the yarn here, 
pinch the tail between your fingers and pull through the loop. Repeat this process all the way across your blanket, tying overhand knots between each section of fringe. Try your best to line up the knots as you go along, and don't forget to do one last overhand knot on each side with the five leftover strands on the edge here. Once all your knots are in place, adjust the heights of each of them to try to get them as even as possible. Once they're all lined up, tighten the knots however you'd like. It might be a little excessive, but I always like to pull on each individual strand just because it gets the knot super tight and it looks super nice. But you go ahead and do whatever is most comfortable for you. With these side knots though, I don't tighten each strand individually just because I worry it might make the knot a little bit too tiny. So just tighten them enough that the knot is secure. Once all your knots are nice and tight, grab a pair of scissors and it's time to cut our fringe. So feel free to trim the fringe as much as you'd like here. Your main goal is just to get the fringe all the same length. I recommend being so careful cutting here though because you can always trim more later if you need to, but you can't put more back on. So just go slow and take your time. And in case anyone is curious, from the bottom of my blanket to the bottom of my fringe was about five inches long. Also, this might be super random, but I ended up needing more than one skein of yarn for the fringe on this blanket, so some of the strands were from the center of the skein and they just looked super bent or crinkly. So I ended up grabbing a spray bottle full of water, I laid out a blocking mat, and then I just sprayed the strands down with water till they were soaking wet, smoothed them out the best I could, and then I let them dry overnight, and here's how they look the next day. So much better. But that's it, sweet friends. That is all that there is to making a maple blanket. They are just so fun and addicting to make. If you share any photos of your maple blanket on Instagram or on social media, please tag me because I would love to see. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with your crochet friends. It helps out my channel so much. Thank you so much for watching. I love you and I will see you in the next video.